A black dwarf is a hypothetical celestial object, specifically a white dwarf that has cooled to the point where it no longer emits much heat or light. Due to the estimated duration for a white dwarf to reach this stage being greater than the current age of the universe, 13.8 billion years, it is not anticipated that any black dwarves now exist in the universe. The temperature of the coldest white dwarves serves as an observational constraint on the age of the universe. The manner in which huge stars meet their demise, including the type of explosion and resulting remnants, is primarily determined by the sizes of their helium cores and hydrogen envelopes at the time of death. Stellar winds are the sole mechanism for mass loss in solitary stars, and their intensity is dependent on the star's metallicity. Degenerate matter arises when the Pauli exclusion principle has a substantial impact on the state of matter at low temperatures. In astrophysics, the word is employed to denote compact celestial bodies like white dwarfs and neutron stars when gravitational collapse cannot be prevented by heat pressure alone. The phrase also pertains to metals within the framework of the Fermi gas approximation. Degenerate matter is commonly represented as an ideal Fermi gas, which is a collection of fermions that do not interact with each other. Quantum mechanical systems, when confined to a finite volume, exhibit a discrete set of energies known as quantum states. The Pauli exclusion principle prohibits the occupation of the same quantum state by identical fermions. When the thermal energy of the particles is insignificant, the lowest energy quantum states are completely occupied at the point of lowest total energy. This stage is commonly known as complete degeneracy. The degeneracy pressure persists even after the temperature reaches absolute zero. By introducing additional particles or decreasing the volume, the particles are compelled to occupy quantum states with higher energy levels. In this scenario, the application of a compressive force is necessary, resulting in the emergence of a counteracting pressure. The salient characteristic is that the degeneracy pressure is independent of temperature and solely reliant on the fermion's density. Degeneracy pressure maintains the equilibrium of dense stars, regardless of the thermal composition of the star. The term black dwarf has also been used to describe theoretical brown dwarfs in their late stages, which have cooled down and do not have enough mass, less than around 0.7 times the mass of the sun, to sustain nuclear fusion of hydrogen. A white dwarf is the remnant of a low or medium mass main sequence star, typically below 9 to 10 solar masses. Once it has either discharged or merged all the components that it can sufficiently heat to undergo fusion, what remains is a compact sphere of electron degenerate matter that gradually cools through thermal radiation, ultimately transforming into a black dwarf. Black dwarfs, if they were to exist, would provide a detection challenge due to their inherent characteristic of emitting minimal radiation. Nevertheless, their presence may be identified based on their gravitational impact. Astronomers discovered many white dwarfs that had cooled to temperatures below 3,900 K in 2012 using the 2.4-meter telescope at MDM Observatory. Their estimated age ranges from 11 to 12 billion years. Because the far future evolution of stars depends on physical questions which are poorly understood, such as the nature of dark matter and the possibility and rate of proton decay, which is yet to be proven to exist, it is not known precisely how long it will take white dwarfs to cool to blackness. Physicists estimate that it would take 10 to the power of 15 years for a white dwarf to cool to 5 Kelvin or minus 268.15 degrees Celsius. If weakly interacting massive particles or WIMPs exist, interactions with these particles may keep some white dwarfs much warmer than this for approximately 10 to the power of 25 years. 
If protons are not stable, white dwarfs will also be kept warm by energy released from proton decay. For a hypothetical proton lifetime of 10 to the power of 37 years, it was calculated that proton decay will raise the effective surface temperature of an old one solar mass white dwarf to approximately 0.6 Kelvin or minus 273.9 degrees Celsius. Although cold, this is thought to be hotter than the cosmic background radiation temperature, somewhere 10 to the power of 37 years in the future. It is speculated that some massive black dwarfs may eventually produce supernova explosions. These will occur if Pycna nuclear density-based fusion processes much of the star to iron, which would lower the Chandrasekhar limit for some black dwarfs below their actual mass. If this point is reached, it would then collapse and initiate runaway nuclear fusion. The most massive to explode would be near 1.35 solar masses and would take of the order of 10 to the power of 1100 years, while the least massive to explode would be about 1.16 solar masses and would take of the order 10 to the power of 32,000 years, totaling around 1% of all black dwarfs. One major issue is that proton decay would decrease the mass of a black dwarf far more rapidly than pycnonuclear processes occur, preventing any supernova explosions. Once the sun stops fusing helium in its core and ejects its layers in a planetary nebula in about 8 billion years, it will become a white dwarf and, over trillions of years, eventually will no longer emit any light. After that, the sun will not be visible to the equivalent of the naked human eye, removing it from optical view, even if the gravitational effects are evident. The estimated time for the sun to cool enough to become a black dwarf is at least 10 to the power of 15 years or 1 quadrillion years, but it could take much longer than this if weakly interacting massive particles exist. The described phenomena are considered a promising method of verification for the existence of wimps and black dwarfs. When the temperature of a fermion system approaches absolute zero, degenerate matter displays quantum mechanical characteristics. These qualities arise from the interplay of the Pauli exclusion principle and quantum confinement. The Pauli exclusion principle dictates that only one fermion can occupy each quantum state, whereas confinement guarantees that the energy of these states rises as they become occupied. At low temperatures, fermions are compelled to inhabit high energy states since the lowest states are already occupied. The Pauli principle and Fermi-Dirac distribution are applicable to all forms of matter. However, the situations that are most intriguing for degenerate matter involve systems consisting of many fermions. The Fermi gas model can aid in comprehending these circumstances. Instances encompass electrons within metallic substances, as well as those within white dwarf stars and neutrons within neutron stars. The electrons are constrained by the columbic attraction to the positive ion cores, while the neutrons are constrained by gravitational pull. The fermions, compelled to occupy higher energy states due to the Pauli exclusion principle, provide a counteracting force that hinders additional compression. The process of assigning fermions to quantum states based on their energy levels is referred to as the Fermi-Dirac distribution. Degenerate matter manifests the consequences of the Fermi-Dirac distribution. The heat death of the universe is a concept that predicts the eventual destiny of the universe. It proposes that the cosmos will gradually reach a state of complete absence of thermodynamic free energy, rendering it incapable of supporting any processes that lead to a rise in entropy. Heat death does not necessitate a certain absolute temperature, but rather signifies the inability to utilize temperature differences or other processes for the purpose of performing work. In the realm of physics, this phenomenon occurs when the cosmos attains thermodynamic equilibrium. If the universe has a hyperbolic or flat curvature, or if dark energy is a positive cosmological constant, it will perpetually expand, leading to an eventual heat death. This heat death 
will result in the universe cooling down to approach equilibrium at an extremely low temperature over an extended period of time. The concept of heat death originates from Lord Kelvin's theories in the 1850s. Kelvin applied the principles of the first and second laws of thermodynamics, which describe heat as a form of energy loss in nature, to broader universal processes. This enabled Kelvin to articulate the heat death conundrum, which refutes the notion of an eternally existing universe. The theory suggests that from the Big Bang through the present day, matter and dark matter in the universe are thought to have been concentrated in stars, galaxies and galaxy clusters, and are presumed to continue to do so well into the future. Therefore, the universe is not in thermodynamic equilibrium, and objects can do physical work. The decay time for a supermassive black hole of roughly one galaxy mass or 10 to the power of 11 solar masses because of Hawking radiation is in the order of 10 to the power of 100 years. So entropy can be produced until at least that time. Some large black holes in the universe are predicted to continue to grow up to perhaps 10 to the power of 14 solar masses during the collapse of superclusters of galaxies. Even these would evaporate over a time scale of up to 10 to the power of 106 years. After that time, the universe enters the so-called dark era and is expected to consist mostly of a dilute gas of photons and leptons. Dark dwarves, black holes and iron stars are closely connected to the concept of Boltzmann brains, fate of the universe and de Sitter space. An iron star is a hypothetical form of compact star that may exist in the universe in the distant future, possibly 10 to the power of 1500 years from now. Cold fusion caused by quantum tunneling would cause the light nuclei of conventional matter to fuse into iron 56, according to the premise underlying the formation of iron stars. Objects that were once neutron stars or white dwarfs, that have chilled but not completely, will slowly transform into iron stars. According to the Boltzmann brain theory, even in a universe reduced to total entropy, a random pattern of matter will arise from this disorder. Imagine that a Boltzmann brain emerges from pure quantum fluctuations in this cold, empty and infinite-like space. There is an abysmal possibility that this could occur, but it is not zero. And if a Boltzmann brain has a non-zero chance of occurring, then two Boltzmann brains will have even a lesser, but non-zero chance of occurring. It is possible that the universe may enter a second inflationary epoch, or assuming that the current vacuum state is a false vacuum. The vacuum may decay into a lower energy state, it is also possible that entropy production will cease and the universe will reach heat death. It is suggested that, over vast periods of time, a spontaneous entropy decrease would eventually occur via the Poincaré recurrence theorem, thermal fluctuations, and fluctuation theorem. Through this, another universe could possibly be created by random quantum fluctuations or quantum tunneling in roughly 10 to the power of 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 56 years. Such a scenario has been described as speculative and probably wrong and untestable.